the darn production. We just made it after it's ain't the sight of my silence, but it hit my features right and leave you shook outside yourself like just on talking like a dude all about my house. Remember how you did me, I remember this is heavy, the incentive for the check. AB, how I leave it in the field, level with you niggas, bring the table chairs, blow a bed, I'm not settled in my nigga like a magic trick, I make it look real easy, nigga. Hook, line, sinker, rhythm in my hustle, nigga, that's how I street truck, creeping, running with the mall, classy popping off, temper on Benny Siegel now, knowing damn well that this type of attitude will make my mama frown, mama smile, we don't make it out of life, so I can't let these niggas slide a we're back here again on Five Sticks. It's your boy OG. Um, so let's jump right into it. I want to touch on the video. I just got done, finished watching the Fresh and Fit podcast on Rumble uh, featuring Gonzalo Lyra, I believe that's his name. And a uh, great podcast. If you haven't watched it yet, go ahead, go to Rumble, check it out. It's pretty cool, right? It's a great podcast. However, I do take issue with some of the things he said, right? So let's go ahead and play the video real quick. And one other thing, too, uh, Gonzalo, um, you mentioned that you used to work in the renewable energy. And we're going to get right into Ukraine uh, after this. But you did a fantastic video on your Patreon uh, where you talked about how renewable energy is a scam <laughs> and how people like Greta Thunberg, quite frankly, are very stupid and don't know what they're talking Set about. The environment. Um, can you give us a quick because I, I think that that video was so important and it was uh, really well done because you actually come from that background and you understand. Why is renewable energy a scam? Just summarize it real quick and we'll get into it. Uh, okay, real, real quick. I got into it because it was a business opportunity that came my way to get into the solar panel energy business in Chile. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, man, this is going to be great. You know, I'm going to be doing good for the environment, right? And, and you know, it'll, it'll be a great conversation starter at cocktail parties and shit. You know, I'm in renewable energy, man. I'm like, I'm one of the cool kids, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, because I mean, look at me, I'm a, I'm a nerdy SOB. So of course, you know, I gotta, I gotta work with what I got. And if I get, get into some cool business deal, you know, maybe something will come my way. Right. Yeah. So anyway, um, I got into it with like, you know, all these illusions and they were quickly dispelled. The whole thing is a fucking scam uh, in terms of net, um, the damage caused by uh, renewable energies is far more than, than what is saved. They talk about, you know, how, how, you know, windmills and solar panels and shit like that is good for the environment. That's bullshit. The chemicals necessary to make the solar panels, for instance, mm -hmm. the minerals necessary, they create uh, all kinds of environmental messes at the mining site, uh, let alone the actual panels, because you, you have to put these panels like on the, on the countryside in, in a land that could be used for farming, for instance. And what happens is that if every one of these stupid panels break and they all break eventually, Mm -hmm. What happens is that out of them comes like all kinds of uh, uh, minerals, cobalt, all kinds of very dangerous substances spill out. So one, I want to start this off. Uh, well, before I get into one, I want to start this off and preface by saying I do have an, a bias in this situation because I do sell solar. So, I mean, you could say that, but he also has a bias in the fact that he is a proponent or a pusher of nuclear energy. And anybody who tells you different just doesn't know what he's talking about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Doesn't know what he's talking about or is pursuing some agenda or some bullshit. One, okay, I wrote it down. I was taking notes. I like Myron does. So one, uh, you know, his whole argument or conversation regarding solar is his personal experience installing solar in Chile, right? Not America. And it's based on, I guess you would say, commercial solar and not based on residential so solar. However, again, the way solar is done in different countries is not the same way it's generally done here in America too as well. I want to say that. So two, he said the damage, there's damage caused by the solar and it's uh, pertains to solar panels get damaged or they degrade over time and that they release uh, elements or minerals or bad chemicals into the environment, okay? So, <laughs> So I don't know when was the last time he looked into solar or seeing what it was all about or how it was going or where it's moving, but so many advances, advances in solar technology has been made in like the last four to five years, right? So if you don't know, solar panels are made of, uh, right now they're made of, you know, uh, polysilicone, which is your silicone, right? Metal and glass, which is very simplified. We'll get into a little bit uh, um in-depth details right there's two types of uh 
solar panels. You got the P-types and the N-types that kind of now go and put them together. Basically, it's positive or negative, right? Uh, the old solar, back in the day, you know, your grandpa's solar type deal was more just the P-type. Now, the new type of solar is, is the negative type, right? Meaning that they're the way when they work or how they produce the electricity, right? They are not affected by how much light there is or which doesn't induce their decay pattern, right? So how bright the sun hits, it doesn't make them, uh, you know, break down faster or something like that, right? Or the production output, it doesn't affect how much it increases, right? When exposed uh, to extreme sunlight. So basically, it, the new type of solar panels, they're not like they degrade over time. Yes, as far as working, but as far as them like breaking down or releasing stuff, it, that doesn't happen. It doesn't even make sense because again, there's no liquid chemicals and the solar panels are all in solid state and the way they're encapsulated is that they're not gonna because it rains on the solar panel they're not just gonna leak out right yes panels are made with harm let's say we could say toxic minerals like gallium or boron or even phosphorus yes it does include those however a 2016 report from nature.com shows that the carbon footprint of solar panels being significant significantly reduced 17 to 24 percent every time uh hold on every time the install capacity has doubled in the last 40 years so basically as far as like you know let's think of it like ordering a shirt you order one shirt it's gonna be like 20 dollars now if you order a hundred of them then you only pay like what 200 dollars, right you order a thousand then you might only pay you know 300 dollars, something like that right so basically as more people have been pushing the idea of solar as the government has been pushing go solar, solar panels, sunlight energy, blase blase. It has decreased the carbon footprint of going and get creating these, you know, because now they have a steady supply. They don't have to go back and forth so much. So basically it has decreased as the demand for it has increased, right? Because I wrote this down, right? So uh, overall, greenhouse gas emissions, as far as like um, creating solar panels, or getting them stalled, when people say, oh, it takes trucks to go and get this stuff. Overall, regardless of what you want to say, greenhouse gas emissions is lower than coal or natural gas. Uh, and they last, the solar panels themselves, they last for decades without upkeep because, you know, they don't degrade easily. It's not something that's just going to start breaking down because it's out in the environment, right? And uh, again, there's four types of solar panels, right? You got monocrystalline silicone, polycrystalline silicone, you got cadmium telluride, and then you got copper indium. Uh, or gallium selenide, right? S-E-D-H-E-C dot gov acknowledges not all solar panels, right, have, um, you know, hazardous materials in them. And not all solar panels have hazardous materials in them that would leak out and uh, cause some type of damage. Because again, technology has progressed a whole lot further. Right? Freeenergy.com acknowledges that solar panels do contain lead, right? However, Let's say if you're gonna install 92 gigawatts of solar panels, right? Uh, that only has 4,400 tons of lead used as soldering inside of it. Whereas, okay, batteries have, uh, batteries, car batteries or batteries in general have nine or produce or use nine million tons of lead so let me say that again 92 gigawatts of solar panels installed only has 4400 tons of lead whereas batteries used every single year use 9 million tons of lead so if we want to talk about harmful chemicals i mean stuff already uses these same chemicals or minerals that we want to talk about that solar has and they use and produce far more amounts than installing solar right three Solar panels leach out cobalt. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. Solar panels do not leach out cobalt because solar panels don't use cobalt, right? Uh, again, this is the part where it's like, just because you speak conf confidently or sure of yourself doesn't mean you're actually correct, right? Solar panels don't use cobalt. Cobalt is used for energy storage for batteries, uh, in cell phones, laptops, EVs, or batteries for solar energy storage, not in the solar panels themselves, right? It is also used, cobalt, right? It's also used 
with cutting or grinding tools, pigments and paints, colored glass, surgical implants, imaging like x-rays, CT scans, or food irradiation, right? So if you, when you start saying, oh, cobalt or uh, talking about mining for cobalt, you have to realize if you're attributing cobalt uh, mining issues exclusively to uh, renewable energy in general is disingenuous because cobalt is not only used for rene renewable energy or battery uh, products. It's used in a wide variety of things, hence why the co cobalt mining industry is so big and haven't really put too many regulations on it is simply because if they did a lot of these uh you know hate to say it but uh third world countries that are actually the ones out there mining they wouldn't have a job right because this supplies their economy regardless of what you want to say but let's play devil's advocate right let's let's play devil's advocate and say the cobalt used in the panels the solar panels uh uh cobalt was used in solar panels in 2000 four two thousands when they were blue right they don't make those panels anymore because they're inefficient they don't produce enough electricity xyz and again those ones in themselves they don't just leach out excuse me wow mm. need some hand sanitizer solar panels do not use cobalt there are no panels that may have had cobalt aren't made created or sold anymore and yeah that's that in the 2020s the main minerals used in solar panels, especially residential panels, are aluminum, copper, uh, silicone, silver, zinc. And then we have the byproducts that are not normally man-made, like selenium, which is a copper byproduct, gallium is aluminum extract, indium is a lead or zinc byproduct, and then tel tellurium is a copper byproduct. And then, of course, nickel they use in the solar too as well. So while, yes... Solar panels are made with certain minerals that can be toxic. Most uh, commentators who uh, raise uh, to solar panels lead to breaking down and decay and leaving harm harmful chem chemicals in the environment. Um, they actually don't have any uh, support or evidence leading towards that. And most of the times these ideas or these talking points or conversations are, again, pushed by people who support using nuclear energy or other things like fossil fuels, right? They always say that, but again, there's no evidence to prove that. In fact, there's evidence to prove otherwise, right? So uh, I'll put the proof, right? <laughs> I'll put the sources in the description down below. A single car, a single battery for a car or farm equipment has more lead than seven hundred sol individual solar panels like one battery and how many cars on the road so when we're talking about lead being poisonous things like that or solar panels have lead like that's it's very minuscule compared to everything else that has and uses lead in our life right and then again another study shows a single shotgun shell has double the amount of a single uh solar panel has in lead too as well so again another study done in germany by the fraunhofer institute for solar energy systems uh, says that each solar panel has about 12 grams of lead whereas a car battery has 8.7 kilograms of lead right so i'll put that down there too as well there's websites claiming that or people saying that uh, the minerals leaked out of solar panels would be cadmium telluride that it's toxic to humans which it's not right obviously it's not something you want to eat but again it's not something that's toxic in a sense now Cadmium, okay, is toxic, right? But it's not the same. So here's an example. So H2, hydrogen gas, is dangerous. It's flammable, it'll blow up, very volatile. Whereas water, H2O, is needed for your survival, right? So it's kind of the same thing. So again, this study was done by Virginia Tech Center for Coal and Energy Research, March 8th, 2019. So, and then again, solar panels themselves, they don't just break down, as I said earlier, they don't just all break down and uh, because they're out in the sun, they're getting hit by wind and stuff like that. No, they don't break down like a decomposing uh, body or decomposition, I guess is the word I want to use, like a body's decomposition, nor do they decay or leach chemicals into the environment, right? By exposure. So, and even when crushed, they did a study, the same uh, March 8th, 2019 study they did a landfill experiment where they took solar panels 
It ran him over by a landfill compactor, which had 50 tons, <laughs> had 50 tons in the landfill compactor, and they ran over these solar panels six times. And the panels maintained the encapsulation that prevented, quote unquote, leakage from the minerals inside them, right? So when people are saying, oh, you, if they get thrown into the landfill, they'll break and uh, stuff will leak out. Not true, right? So solar panels can, in fact, be thrown in the landfill. However, they're a valuable resource and we're still trying to figure out how to recycle those, right? So again, most solar panels are, in fact, safe enough to be disposed of in regular landfills, according to a study done in May 2017 by the North Carolina State University Health and Safety Impacts of Solar Photovoltaics, okay? Because they passed the EPA's TCLP test, which is Toxic Characteristic Leaching Procedure, right? So most solar panels can be thrown in the landfill because, again, they're not going to leach or uh, leak anything to the landfill that would be harmful to the environment and get into our water systems, right, okay? So studies also show these chemicals do not leach from solar panels into the environment under normal conditions or even possible accidents such as storms or fires. This was a test done in 2012 uh, by the study. The study is called Fate and Transport Evaluation of Potential Leaching Risk from Cadmium, cadmium Telluride photo, Photovoltaics. Again, I'll put that down here. So it said even from regular exposure, as he said, they, they do degrade over time. They degrade in production, not in physical attributes, okay? And again, this is proven here. And wreck that land, and you can't use it for farming after that because there's no way to extract it, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, it, it, I mean, I'm just talking about solar, solar power. Um, you know, the windmills, right? Again, that's a big old scam. The, the, the blades themselves are made of these uh, polymers that are not biodegradable. So all they can do is just bury them forever and they'll just, they'll never decay. Number four, windmill blades. Listen, since 2003, 25 reviews have been published uh, with scientific literature on wind turbines and health and have no reason to believe that wind turbines are harmful <laughs> much less the blade. So there's no risk from wind turbines producing some type of radioactive bullshit uh, that might be harmful to your health. Now, the blades themselves, the blades can be recycled. This has been proven, right? Uh, but if they do happen to end up in the landfill or they have to make an own landfill specifically for the, turb the blades themselves, right? The EPA, uh, the EPA reports I wrote it down. The EPA reports that 27 million tons of plastic was dumped in landfills in 2018 alone, which is more than 10 times the amount that might accumulate from wind from windmills in 2050. So again, let me say that again. So when people are like, oh, the windmills are made of, of this certain type of plastic and that's plastic and, and then it breaks down. No, they don't break down. They don't decay, as he said, right? And again, in 2018, 27 million tons of plastic. That's one year. That's more than 10 times the amount of plastic or a chemical that may potentially, which doesn't happen, uh, accumulate from windmills by 2050. We're not even, we're halfway there, barely halfway to 2050, like 10 times. So let's, let's continue, let's continue. I wrote it down, I wrote it down, all right? Um, something that, and then he himself, let's play it again. He himself just said that it doesn't degrade. They, the, the windmill blades don't biodegrade and they don't decay. So that makes it inert. And something that is inert is not harmful to the environment. Let me say that again. Something that doesn't biodegrade or break down or decay is inert, which means it is not harmful to the environment, so it doesn't leach anything out. If animals want to sleep on it, live in it, they wouldn't be harmed as well. So, guess what I'm saying? Dump those in the ocean and turn them into barrier reefs. Guess what? That's what they're doing. I'm going to drop the study inside the description below. 
Um, and on top of that, of course, see, when it's coldest, when you need electricity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the solar panels don't work because it's usually going to be cloudy or overcast or, or it's just not enough sunlight. Five, solar panels don't work in the cold or on cloudy days. Bruh, what do you mean? Anything that's electronic works better in the cold. They don't stop working. Like electronics don't get frozen in the cold. They work better. That's why we have cooling. That's why wires are insulated. That's why we use metals that work best that have a high uh, temperature in which they can function, right? So it, in my opinion, that was a very ignorant statement. I don't know if you're being truthful or for whatever, but I'm, I wrote this one down. So that's an ignorant statement. All electronic devices or electronic producing devices, chargers, cables, uh, work significantly better than they are when they are cold or kept cool. Hence why wires are kept in insulation cases hence why metals and electronics are rated or used on how well they work in high heat hence why phones won't let you use them if they overheat hence why i mean you could ask any gamer if their laptop or computer works better when it's blazing hot or if it works better when it's cold like be for real then he says solar panels don't work on cloudy days that's also incorrect because so solar panels don't just work by direct sunlight they also work by indirect sunlight they also work by uv rays hence why you can get a tan if you go to the beach and you're laying out all day even if the sun's not directly on you you can still get a tan same thing okay because as long as there's sunlight in the sky solar panels will be able to produce electricity albeit it might not be as much as the direct sunlight but it will still produce sunlight it will still produce power be for real. This is where the argument to combat that when they start talking about batteries, start talking about generators or maintaining the public grid to draw power from in case your solar doesn't produce enough. Every every uh, energy source is not perfect, right? Every energy producing method is not perfect. However, there that's why we come up with ideas to make it to the most perfect level when uh, the same goes for windmills you know when it's coldest when you need the most electricity there isn't going to be that much wind yeah i'm going to go ahead and cut this part out simply because why he did say something that was silly in my opinion i i did say i thought it was the stupidest thing i ever heard however i misheard because i wrote down in short form at the same time so he didn't say if it's cold, there's no wind. He said there'll be little wind. So all I can say for that is yes, there'll be not all the time, but there might be little wind. The plant, the stuff will still work, right? The windmills will still work. However, obviously not every energy source is perfect. Right. So, and this is proven in Michigan, and I'm going to post that down here, right? And they're able to operate in under negative 30 degrees. So negative 30 degrees, as long as there's wind blowing during the cold, the blades will be spinning and producing electricity. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you start getting into the people involved in this. And they're all a bunch of fucking scamsters. And I can tell you for a fact that a lot of times, you know, these NGOs, like uh, environmental groups of various sorts, non-governmental organizations, they will outright tell you that if you don't pay them off, they will cause all kinds of havoc for you and make sure that you don't get the permit necessary to install your solar panel or windmill or whatever the hell. And so there's a lot of bribery and corruption going on. It's a, it's a big old fucking scam. So I realized after watching this back that when he said they want you to pay them off, he meant pay them off as in bribes and not as in paying off the system. So we're just going to cut out this whole segment because I was wrong. And yes, that's a scam. That's not all of them. So you can't base a whole comment or decision on saying that. Maybe that's just the people you worked for. Right? And the best energy is nuclear. That's the most efficient and it's the cleanest of all, regardless of what the environmental people say. But for ideological reasons, they are opposed to nuclear. And they want to go with this uh, with this other stuff. Hey, what I can agree with is that as far as producing uh, zero carbon emission 
and being sustainable as far as like a fuel source to produce the energy, yes, nuclear energy is the cleanest. That's a fact, right? However, nuclear plants themselves, <laughs> one, they blow up if mishandled, right? I know you've heard that talking point before, but it's a fact. They can be blown up, right? Hence why when they're doing the bombing where you're at right now, right, in Ukraine, they were concerned that they might blow up the nuclear plant because if they did that, they would have another Chernobyl. So would it be security, securely uh, uh, on a stance of national security, right? Would it be advisable to just have so many nuclear plants all around the United States so somebody could target that in the future? And then blow it up. Now we got a whole place, um, you know, a whole, we got different Chernobyls all over the America. No, that is, no, that's, and then it takes long, I think it takes about 10 to 12 years to build them, over $10 billion. And this $10 billion in 12 years to build is if there's no setbacks, holdups, supply chain issues, right? So why would, financially from a business standpoint, why would they push $10 billion into nuclear when they could, and then maybe get it built in 12 years when they could spend $10 billion now, not saying that's how much they spend, but they could spend $10 billion now on helping everybody in America go solar, and then they can make money back on that and give homeowners money or relief on taxes for going solar. Like, which one makes more sense? And then which one's more easier to sustain for versus... Uh, Versus, excuse me, trying to figure out how to manage lines from house to house, manage a whole grid or update a whole grid, which also costs billions of dollars to fully update a whole power grid, right? Which, which one's more feasible and makes more sense, to push solar or to push going nuclear, if we want to really think about it financially? Now, when we start talking about the recycle part, um, the waste from nuclear, toxic, radioactive, hazardous waste, that is going to be toxic and hazardous for a thousand years, right? I rather, again, this doesn't happen, but I rather have solar panels in landfills leaking out cobalt in the environment, which will eventually fix itself in, let's say, 20 or 30 years versus a thousand years of something being radioactive and then having the potential of something to blow up or be targeted and then blown up and have that place inhabitable for uh, Chernobyl is still uninhabitable. So let's say for having something inhabitable for a hundred years because the power plant got blown up, I would much rather have some cobalt in in the grass than not be able to like what we're we talking about. So, like I said, he's speaking uh, sp specifically on solar in Chile. But if you really start to look in solar for residential, then you don't have to worry about cobalt. There's no cobalt in solar panels, people. <laughs> but again, I digress. I digress, right? So I, I, you, Gonzalo, you have some great talking points. You sound very educated, know what some of the stuff you're talking about. However, you can't uh, push for nuclear energy by highlighting the decay or the stuff doesn't de the wind the windmill blades don't decay and that's bad for the environment and solar panels leak cobalt but you want nuclear radioactive waste to be produced with no way to realistically get rid of it cuz they want to send they want to send the stuff to the sun they decide not to do that they still don't have any type of facilities to uh, help or take care of the toxic waste. I think they started building a storage facility in a mountain and they already spent about a billion or $10 billion on something like that. And they still haven't finished and they abandoned that. So when you start, you gotta be fair on the things you're talking about and make it actually make sense. But you, you do sound confident, but let's be real, right? Nuclear is the cleanest form of a net zero uh, carbon emission or a negative a zero em carbon emission system and then the fuel it produces is sustained because it everything that gets burned is also fuel so it just keeps on going yeah sure that that's great but then the waste products radioactive if once we figure out how you know figure out how to get rid of that or figure out how to handle that there's no need there's no reason not to go nuclear i do i do know they're starting 
I think someplace in France or some nuclear company in France that they're uh, looking into. I think they're saying the next few years they might be able to build nuclear plants in two to five years, and then that their uh, their uranium cores would never have a spill because they're as small as like you know uh, billiard, billiard balls. Uh, wow, pause. They're small as the um, <laughs> pool table, the pool table cues, right? <laughs> Swallows the pool table cues, right? And they would never have potential of leaking. But again, that's on that side of the world. In America, there's so many restrictions on nuclear um, that's made it 10 times more expensive than what it should be, right? So on a logical standpoint, yes, nuclear energy is clean, but we haven't figured out how to figure out a thousand years of radioactivity. And then solar energy makes sense However, we haven't figured out uh, how to create the most optimal producing panels, or we have, or let's say it's gonna get better, right? But we haven't figured out how to store the energy. And of course you have the limit of what you're gonna do at dark. When the night, when it's nighttime, what are you gonna do, right? Or how, do, how can we re recycle each panel to get the stuff that we put back in the panels while at the same time, um, all the resources we go into recycling this to make it financially efficient and sustainable. So again, as we said, no, there's no perfect uh, energy production cycle just yet. It's still all subjective, right? However, when you really think about solar, it's easier for the government to push and it gives them leeway. So like- You've got your government on the thumb of the, of the, of the scale, which makes it profitable but at the expense of uh, being an inefficient business. It's a big old scam any way you look at it. Anyways, uh, appreciate your time. Y'all stay blessed.